Hello students, how are you? So in the previous video of class 7th science, we started the chapter soil. Okay, uh, so let's quickly uh, revise what we discussed in the first video. In the first video, we discussed about the importance of the soil. That soil allows the growth of the plant. It supplies water and nutrients also that required in the growth of the plants. Okay, it is the main part of agriculture. And we discussed that uh, different types of soil uh, support different kinds of crops. Okay, many mi microorganisms also live in the soil. And underground water is used for various purposes okay this was the diagram depicting the importance of the soil that plant it is a medium for plant growth engineering medium habitat for soil organism recycling system and nutrients and organic wastes okay then we discussed about what pollutes the soil we told you that uh, dumping non-biodegradable uh, means we discussed that dumping non-biodegradable substances such as plastic bags and polythene causes soil pollution Waste products from industries which contain chemicals can affect the soil adversely and excess use of fertilizers, fertilizers and pesticides pollute the soil and decrease its fertility. Therefore, before dumping anything waste into the soil, it must be treated properly. Okay? The government has uh, generated some guidelines for the industries that are near the water stream or wherever they dump the, uh, you can say, the waste product of the industries. It is said that uh, the waste first of all should be treated and all the harmful substance from it should be decreased to the minimum concentration that's so that the uh, amount of them in the soil decreases okay so this we discussed then the what pollutes the soil then we discussed about the soil profile the soil consists of distinct layers which are also called horizons of the soil it is a vertical section of the soil which depicts all the layers of the soil the layers of soil can be seen if we dig deep through it like while creating a well or while laying the foundation of a building humus the decaying matter in the soil is called humus weathering soil is formed when rocks break down this process is also called weathering the weathering of rocks takes place because of rains and their different conditions like temperature climatic conditions parent rock the nature of the soil that is its texture and availability of mineral depends upon the rock from which, which it is formed this rock is often called as parent rock okay then we discuss this diagram that this is the soil profile you can see at the bottom it is the bedrock then c horizon b horizon a horizon i told you that in the a horizon it is humus so that the, that's why the color is different of it it is dark brown in color because of rich nutrients and humus okay and that's why the most of the plants it grow over in the a horizon okay the roots of the plant b horizon it also consists of some amount of humus but not that as amount is present in a okay and in C, some rocks are present, and in the bedrock, as I already know, large rocks are present which are not weathered. Okay, clear, students. So this was what we discussed in the previous video. Now let's move forward. We'll discuss the layers of soil one by one. Layers of the soil, horizon A. This layer is also called the top soil, and it is visible to us. It contains large amounts of humus and minerals which make it dark in color. The soil is rich in nutrients because of the presence of humus. The top soil has a soft texture and can retain water easily. That is why plants roots grow in the top soil region. The top soil is a home to many living organisms as well like insects, worms, beetles, rodents and moles etc. Okay. So as we say that topsoil is a soft te texture, it is a very important point because it can retain the water. So we can say that the water holding capacity of the horizon A is very good. And that's why the plants roots grow in the topsoil region because they can get the water that is available there. Okay. And this topsoil is also rich in nutrients because of the presence of the humus. And this presence of the humus, it makes it color dark. Okay. This is a very important point. Clear students? So this was about horizon A. Again, it is also called topsoil. Contains amount of large amount of humus, nutrients, minerals. It is a tough, It has a soft texture, and it can retain water easily. And it is home to many living organisms. Next, horizon B or the middle layer. It is the next layer of the soil which does not contain much humus. The minerals are found in large quantities in this layer. And this layer has a hard texture, light color, and is more compact than the top soil. Okay, very important. It is the next layer of the soil which does not contain much humus. It has but not as much amount as A horizon has. The minerals are found in large quantities in this layer. This layer has a hard texture, 
light color and is more compact than the top soil clear <clears throat> horizon c or you can say the third layer the third layer of the soil consists of small rocks with cracks in them and these rocks are partly weather weathered okay we will discuss we have discussed about weather that because of the rainfall the cracks develop in the rocks so partly weather means they have small cracks in them means they are they have begun the process of weathering and the they are into the process of formation of soil okay so third layer it is consists of small rocks and with cracks in them and these are partly weathered then comes the last one that is the bedrock the last layer of the soil is called the bedrock it contains large pieces of rocks that are not weathered or exposed to any winds or water bedrock cannot be dug with the help of a spade it is very hard okay so it is said that the bedrock cannot be dug because large rocks are present over there and <clears throat> these rocks are not weathered also because they are not exposed to any wind or water okay so they cannot be dug with the help of spade because they are very hard so these are the different layers of the soil or you can say different horizons okay go through them students again and then we will be moving forward okay now the next topic is how is soil formed very important one we know that soil is formed from weathering of the parent rock and the texture of the soil depends upon the parent rocks only this process takes time maybe a hundred of years and then the fine soil is formed okay the soil formation is a very slow process we all know this so it takes a very long time and the soil that is formed from the weathering of the parent rock the texture of that soil depends upon parent rock only okay and this process may take 100 of years in the first stage of the soil formation the soil is generally non porous in nature then it slowly turns into soil having air and water in the pores see what happens students in the starting the first stage that is the soil formation it is generally non porous non porous means see porous means having small very tiny holes so what does that hole do in the soil they trap the air and water also so that's why the more porous the soil is more good is for the growing of the plants or growing of different crops okay the less porous is the soil it is not good for growing of the plants clear so in the first stage of soil formation it is generally non porous in nature then it slowly turns into a soil having air and water in the pores how does it turn see by the continuous action of different microorganism temperature rainfall and wind okay these are the certain factors that slowly and steadily uh, keep continuing the weathering process and the soil from non porous becomes porous in nature we can define soil as a mixture of rock particles and humus based on the size of particles and the textures of the soil it can be divided into various types okay the, because of the size of particles of the soil what is the size of particle it can be divided into various types or we can say the different types of the soil okay see the formation of soil when the bedrock is there the disintegrating of the bedrock begins means the rock start to develop the uh, you can say cracks in them why because of the temperature rainfall wind etc okay so the bedrock begins to disintegrate in the second organic matter facilitates further disintegration okay so you can see the cracks are widening and more and more disintegration is taking place third when the bedrock the water percolates horizons form because once the crack develops the water can enter through these holes okay now you can see slowly and steadily a and c horizon can be differentiated and finally deeper profile more humus thicker horizons you can see different types of horizons are developed and plant growth also started so this is the different stages of the soil formation but 
remember student it takes a very long period of time okay so that's why it is suggested or it is said to do more and more plantation why it is said that you should do not do deforestation or you should just uh, plant more and more trees the reason is because if uh, the roots of the plants hold the soil and they help the uh, particles of the soil to bind together okay so this one or that's why we say that deforestation should not be done okay now next topic is types of soil on the base of the size of the particles and water holding capacity there are different types of soils namely clay soil loamy soil sandy soil and silt soil okay so let's discuss them one by one first one is the sandy soil sandy soil has big particles that have large spaces between them the space between these particles are filled with air hence sandy soils are called well aerated soils well aerated means a good amount of air is present between them the particles because of large spaces water can easily penetrate through the particles of sand sandy soils however cannot hold water okay hence sandy soils are light aerated and dry in nature sandy soil lack much nutrients and do not support the diverse growth of plants very important see students the sandy soils they have <coughs> large spaces between them between the particles so that it it is clear that they are well aerated means air is present between them so we can say that they are they are well aerated but they cannot hold water very important property that they cannot hold water so the nature of the sandy soil is aerated but dry okay air is present but dry but if the soil is dry so definitely it will lack the nutrients and will not support the growth of the plants okay so this is about the sandy soil that it has big particles and have large spaces between them good it is highly aerated but it is dry in nature because it cannot hold water okay next one is the clayey soil clayey soil consists of fine particles which have less space between them since there is not much space between them the particles clayey soils are not well aerated like sandy soils the tiny gaps between the particle although allow absorption of water in clayey soils easily they are able to hold water hence are suitable for growth of different kinds of plant okay see clayey soil are also aerated but they are not well aerated as like sandy because the particles have less spaces between them but they can allow the absorption of water so they are able to hold the water and suitable for growth of different kinds of plants the clayey soil okay students so there is not much space between the particles of the clayey soil so they are not well aerated in comparison to the sandy soil but sandy soil could not hold water this soil can hold the water okay so it allows the absorption of water and it allows the growth of different kinds of plants clear next one is the loamy soil loamy soil contains similar amount of large and small particles in them they are combination of sandy clay and silty soil calls also contains humus they can hold water in appropriate amounts and therefore support the growth of the plants they are also called agricultural agricultural soils because of their fertility and appropriate texture they contain good amounts of calcium and have a high ph level so the loamy soil is a combination it contains humus it can also hold water in appropriate amounts okay so therefore support the growth of the plant they are also called agricultural soil very important point this one that they are also called agricultural soils because of their fertility and appropriate texture okay they are highly fertile in nature that's why okay and they contain good amounts of calcium and have a high ph level clear students okay let's move on to the next that is the silt soil the silt soil particles are smaller than that of sandy soils but larger than clayey soils silt soil can hold water to some extent because of its fine quality they are generally found near the water bodies like river banks and lakes they are rich in nutrients highly fertile and hence are suitable for agriculture they are often mixed with other soils to improve the fertility of the soil very important again the soil particles they are smaller than the sandy but larger than the clay okay so there is a comparison between the three soils it can hold water to some extent because it is very fine 
they are generally found where they are found they are found near water bodies like river banks okay and because they are found there so they are rich in nutrients okay because from the mountains regions that where uh, this river carry most of the nutrients and different types of okay nutrients so the river banks the so this soil is rich in nutrient and because they are rich in nutrients they are very suitable for the agriculture you might have seen uh, just uh, beside the river banks or you can say on the river banks there are lots of crops growing why because that soil contains lots of nutrient nutrients it is very highly fertile soil okay and they are often mixed with other soils to improve the fertility of soil okay students so these were the different types of soils on what basis on the basis of size of particles and water holding capacity okay now quickly go through them again because it is very important topic of this chapter okay Okay, students so we will continue this chapter in the next video as well we will be starting with the properties of soil okay uh, till then uh, you have to study whatever has been taught you have to make the notes of all the chapters that has been taught to you okay and uh, students stay inside your house take care of yourselves keep studying thank you and have a nice day